I came from a world where I loved <laughs> and was loved. It's been 72 years since this Swampy Cree elder from Pimichikamak was forced to attend residential school. Now she's sharing her journey home in this 45-minute documentary called Return to the Falls. Elder Betty Rosen to Snigason, Michigamak Uzi, Michigamak Nation Uzi. Betty Ross returns to Sugar Falls in between Cross Lake and Norway House in northern Manitoba for the first time since she was ripped from her family. This is a significant place for her because when she was five years old, her custom adopted father brought her here to give her life teachings from the four directions. Before the residential to school, I found my own sanctuary. Uh, and I used to go and sit on a rock. It was very secluded. It was very calm. I felt so uh, protected. I'm sitting on uh, Mother Earth, and I used to talk to the bugs, to the little animals that came, the trees, everything, nature. Pretty soon I, I, I started dancing with them, the dance of life. Looking back now, she says these teachings carried her through a hard life. She's proud of the family she raised and displays pictures all over her house. Ross never knew her own relatives. Ross first attended St. Joseph Residential School in the north and then was moved to a day school. From there in the 60s, she was scooped and forced to move south. They shipped me over here in Winnipeg, St. Joseph's, no, no sorry, uh, Cineboy Residential School, where I graduated from in 1968 because that was my goal. Because I went through a lot of uh, atrocities in the systems. They looked down on me. She suffered spiritual, mental, sexual, and physical abuse, including a beating that's affected her entire life. Because I can't hear from my left ear to this day, uh, because I tried speaking my language. This documentary is bittersweet because Ross speaks a lot of Cree. Being able to retain her language and culture is what the director wanted to focus on. Our focus right now is to take this documentary and, and, and let it have a, an educational angle. We would love to see it for her story to be shown, this film to be eventually shown in schools across the nation, across Turtle Island, um, so, um, and, and beyond. But it's an education tool. There are some reenactments from her childhood memories, but it also shows what Betty Ross's life is like today. She recently received a Manitoba Jubilee for her life's work, including educating young children around Winnipeg. Today, in my line of work as elder in residence for Seven Oaks School Division, I am so honored to be able to have that contact with the, the, the very young generation, elementary school students, because you know why? I'm allowed to be a child at their level. Ross is also greeted by community members and leadership alike in the dock. Pimichikamak Chief David Monia says the community is benefiting since she made the trip home. And she attends our community to talk to the survivors. And I think a lot of people gravitate towards her because she's so well spoken, right? And the history that she has people can relate to it. Ross and her director share this intimate moment watching the documentary one last time together. It's about to premiere in a Winnipeg theater, and after that, the plan is to start taking it to film festivals. Director Apo Erkis is a non-Indigenous person himself. He says sharing stories like this are vital to share with all races. When I hear the truths of people like Elder Betty telling her stories, how can you not be affected? How can you not, how can you ignore that? Sorry. <laughs> um, it, it affected me personally. It's time I said goodbye to this space where I suffered trauma for many years. Enough is enough. I'm going home. I'm... T.R. Wheatley, APTN National News, Winnipeg.